in someone's house or at a dinner table or while walking along the side of the road. When you're a teacher of the word of God, it doesn't take much for you to start a Bible study. Ask any question and class is in session. God is glorified, God is magnified, God is exalted, God is revealed when there is sound instruction from the word of God. Secondly, God is glorified through bold compassion. At verse 11, it reads this way. And behold, there was a woman who for 18 years had had a sickness caused by a spirit. And she was bent double and could not straighten up at all. For years prior to the demon entering the woman's life, and for 18 years with a demon, this Jewish woman gathered with God's people in the synagogue, receiving instruction from the word of God and praying and worshiping God. For 18 years and years prior to the 18 years of having a demon, she gathered with the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the Sadducees, the wealthy aristocrats and priests, the scribes, the Jewish elders who governed the people, and with Jews who had no title all gathering in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And on this Sabbath day, this woman shows up again to the synagogue. Some knew her before the demon had ever entered her life. When she stood tall and straight, each week, every year, since the day the demon entered her, they watched the demon change her life. They saw her body bend over and no longer able to stand straight. They saw her countenance change. They saw her smile less and less often. They saw a woman who once stood tall, no longer able to stand up straight at all. Those who knew her less than 18 years had never known her a day without a demon in her life. In 18 years, she received instruction from the word of God without any liberation from that demon. And behold, there was a woman who for 18 years had had a sickness caused by a spirit, a demon, and she was bent double and could not straighten up at all for 18 years. She received instruction from the word of God without any transformation in her life, without any liberation from that demon. Hearing teaching, but not getting any healing. Hearing about God, but never experiencing the power of God in her life. Coming sick and leaving the same way. Being with God's people did nothing to liberate her of a demon for 18 years. For 18 years she heard that God healed Naaman of leprosy. Gave Hezekiah when he led them out of Egypt, that God fed them in the wilderness with manna from heaven, that God brought a widow's dead son back to life. She heard the instruction. But for 18 years, she left the synagogue with more instruction, but no liberation, no transformation in her life. Had God changed? Was God no longer able to do what God had done in days gone by? Or were all the stories that she had been learning in the synagogue, were they?
they myths? Were they fairy tales? Were they not true? Can God turn a situation around? Or can he? Is God real? Or just a figment of our imagination? Just an idea? For 18 years, she gathered with the people of God to receive instruction. It made no difference to the demon. The demon heard every lesson and still would not vacate her body. Were they giving instruction with no conviction? Did they believe the instruction that they had been giving? What did God's people say to this woman week after week? Year after year, what counsel did they give? What hope did they offer her? It's obvious from the text that a demon will change your life and cause physical, emotional, and even spiritual suffering that no doctor, no surgery, no medication can heal. It's obvious that those with the demon can't liberate themselves from a demon. She could not get that spirit out of her life by herself. I have no doubt she prayed for 18 years, but the demon would not come out. She could not set herself free. It's obvious that someone demon-possessed can hang around God's people and never get healed. The spiritual suffering can go unaddressed while being with people who are supposed to be spiritual. It's obvious from the text that someone can gather to hear the word of God week after week, year after year, and their lives don't get any better. Mm. They never experience liberation from things that enslave them. They never get a breakthrough never get released from things that hold them in bondage. It's obvious that spiritual people can get used to someone remaining in bondage among them. I suppose after the first year, she didn't get free. After the second, the third, and the fourth year, she didn't get free. That some of the Pharisees, some of the scribes, some of the Sadducees says it is what it is. She's going to be that way, and that's all there is to it. And they accepted her condition that she was going to stay that way and there was nothing anyone could do about it. The woman had the demon so long. I wonder if she lost faith that God could heal even while hearing the instruction from the word of God week after week. For 18 years, doubled over from a demon, she gathered with the people of God to hear the word of God and went home the same way that she came. Mm. It's obvious to me that someone can go to church for year after year and go home the same way they came for 18 years with no change in their life, no transformation, no liberation, still in bondage. What did that woman need to get free from that demon? She needed someone with bold compassion to intercede on her behalf. It reads at verse 12, and when Jesus saw her, you see that? When Jesus saw her, he did not ignore her. That's compassion. He called her over. That's bold compassion. He said to her, woman, be freed from your sickness. That's bold compassion. And he laid his hands upon her. That's bold compassion. And immediately she was restored or made a wreck. And what did she do? She began glorifying God. When Jesus saw her, he stopped giving instruction and with bold compassion took action and made intercession in the woman's life. Whatever lesson Jesus was teaching, at that very moment, another lesson needed to be taught. And that is that people matter. 
Yeah. And suffering people matter. Yeah. And when suffering people come among the people of God, sometimes they don't need another word of instruction. They need someone to take bold compassion and take an action that liberates them from some affliction in their life. The lesson that needs to be taught is to show compassion. Yeah. Jesus saw her. Yeah. Didn't look beyond her. Didn't look past her. Saw her. And compassion would not allow him to ignore her. Instead, he called her. Stop teaching about God and did what God has called us to do. To show bold compassion. With bold compassion, Jesus said, Woman, today is your day of liberation. Yeah. Be freed of that demon. Yeah. Freed from your sickness. Yeah. Freed from being bent over. Yeah. Freed from your suffering. Freed from your sorrow. Yeah. Freed from coming to the synagogue. Sick and leaving the same way. Be free from hearing about God without experiencing the power of God in your life. Be yeah. free from any doubt that you have that God cares. And that he still is in the miracle working business. Yeah. Be freed of any doubt that you have that the same God that he'll name it can show up in your life and heal you the same way. Be free of everything that's enslaving you, everything that has you in bondage with bold compassion. Yeah. He made intercession. And immediately, she experienced liberation and restoration. Liberation from the demon and restoration to her body because of Jesus' bold compassion. It's obvious from the text that a demon won't leave from Bible class. All right. He won't leave through instruction. You need bold compassion to get rid of a demon. Yeah. Compassion for the one suffering and boldness under the anointing to make intercession and command liberation from demonic possession. You need somebody who will look the person who's afflicted in the eye and say, Demon! Yeah. yeah. Set that person free. Yeah. yeah. It's obvious from the text. That another Bible study is not what some people need for their lives to change. Mm. They've heard the stories. They've heard the testimony. They know the song. They need someone who knows Jesus mm -hmm. to minister in their life like Jesus with bold compassion. Who will pause the lesson and apply the lesson who understand when it's time to stop instruction and make intercession, when it's time to stop giving more information and take action so people can experience liberation in their life. Some of you have been trying to counsel the same person for so long and it's not made a bit of difference in their life. They can't straighten up their lives at all. They're bent over and can't walk right, can't live right, can't talk right, won't do right. More instruction has not helped. You read the Bible to them. Yeah. You sung the song. You've given the testimony. Their condition might require a different prescription. It might be demonic. Yeah. Counseling has not helped. Being around church folk hasn't made a difference. Sitting under teaching and praise has not set them free. Mm -hmm. And if they'll ever be well, they may need to be delivered. They know the stories. They've heard the testimonies. They know the songs, they've got the information, they've heard the instruction, but still no liberation, still in pain, still suffering, still no joy, still no peace, still doubled over and can't get well. Some have prayed for themselves and have realized they can't liberate themselves. They need someone in their life anointed with the Holy Spirit of God with bold compassion to do ministry in their lives to set them free like the Lord Jesus did with this woman when he saw her in the synagogue. Yeah. If you and I are going to be successful in ministry and helping lives get liberated, we must act with bold compassion.
The day that God allows us to go back in this building, it's time for us to make up our mind that we will always do ministry like the Lord Jesus so that those who are in bondage can be set free. Amen. For God, God is glorified yeah. through sound instruction of the word of God. God is glorified through bold compassion. And God is glorified through every celebration of those who have experienced liberation and restoration. It reads this way at verse 13. And he laid his hands upon her. And immediately she was restored, made a wreck, and began glorifying God. I wonder all those days when she came in that synagogue. Had anyone laid hands upon her and asked in the name of God and the name of Christ to set that woman free? He laid his hands upon her. She was made well, restored, and immediately she began glorifying God. Because of Jesus' bold compassion, listen to this. This woman who had been gathering for 18 years without liberation from that demon, because of his bold compassion, experienced liberation immediately from that demon and restoration in her body because of his bold compassion. She immediately felt her breakthrough. Immediately felt the chains come off. Felt the chains come over her. Immediately she knew she was free. Once her body was free, her tongue broke free. And praise went up in that synagogue that had never been heard in that synagogue. Yes. She began doing among the people of God what should have been a regular occurrence in the synagogue. God was being glorified as lives are being changed among the people of God. When she stood straight, a smile must have come over her face that had not been seen in 18 years. A shout must have come from a belly, up from a heart, down through her lungs, out of a mouth that had never been heard before. Her hands must have went up like they'd never gone up before. Her feet must have started moving like they'd never moved before. And a praise party must have started in that synagogue yeah. like no one had ever witnessed before. Hearing that praise must have sounded foreign to those who were used to giving instruction but not making intercession that brought about liberation. Who were used to giving instruction without transformation. Who were used to giving instruction and lives staying the same. When you get used to giving instruction from the word of God and lives not being changed. When somebody shows up and does ministry like Jesus mm -hmm. and breakthroughs start happening, you begin to hear a praise that you never heard before. You begin to see breakthroughs that you never witnessed before. You begin to see a shout that you've never seen before. When someone does ministry like the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. On this day, mm -hmm. yeah. because of bold compassion, a celebration went forth in that synagogue that had never been heard. I can hear that woman. Thank you, God, for my liberation. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for making intercession. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for how you set me free. Yes. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Thank you for your compassion. Thank you. God, I bless your name today. I can hear that woman. Folk who had never witnessed that woman give praise in 18 years saw the difference that bold compassion can make in someone's life yes. when you do ministry like Jesus. That woman had a testimony now, and I guarantee you she left that synagogue that day Telling people that if you don't know Jesus, you had better get to know the man from Galilee. He set me free. He's a healer. Yeah. He's a doctor. He's a miracle worker. He has all power in his hands. He can fix it. 
he can turn your situation around. Whatever you're going through, he can start you all over again. He's all right. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to set free. He's able to break strongholds. He's able to give you a new beginning. Whatever you do in life, I can hear her. Make sure you get to know Jesus. I don't know about you, saints, but I'm a witness myself. Yeah. That when I got to know Jesus, yeah. that's when my liberation happened. Amen. That's when the chains yeah. fell off. That's when I got freedom in my life. That's when praises went up to God. That's when my feet got happy. That's when I couldn't keep my testimony to myself. That's when I started celebrating the moment. I met the man they called Jesus and he showed up in my life and he healed me and he set me free and he broke the chain. Then the celebration went up. Yes. Are there any witnesses who can testify that you were set free, that he showed up in your life, that he broke the chain, that he released you? Yes. It's obvious from the text. When you gather with God's people, at times, you can tell those who have been delivered. They're the noisy ones. <laughs> Amen. They can't sit down. They try, but they can't. They can't stop praising the Lord because every time they think about where the Lord has brought them from, every time they think about what the Lord has done in their life, they try to keep it back, but it breaks out anyway. And before you know it, they go, thank you, Jesus. You brought me from a mighty long way. They're the ones who don't mean to keep interrupting service. Yeah. But the Lord's been so good yeah, to them right. that they can't keep it to themselves. They can't hold it in. Right. It's like fire. Yeah. Shut up in their bones. Yeah. And when they try to be quiet, their hands start moving. Yeah. When they try to keep their hand down, their foot start yeah. tapping. Yeah. When they try to hold their feet, their hands start yeah. moving. It's like fire. Yeah. Shut up in their bones. When we do ministry mm -hmm. like Jesus, God will be glorified through sound instruction from the word of God, through bold compassion towards the suffering, and through the glorious celebration of everyone who experiences liberation from bondage and restoration in their life. Let me close with this, listen. Not only is God glorified, when we do ministry like Jesus, but listen to this. Mm -hmm. When we do ministry like Jesus, hypocrites are easily identified. Oh, all right. Spot but the synagogue leader, indignant because Jesus healed on the Sabbath, began saying to the crowd in response, there are six days during which work should be done. So come during them and get healed. And not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered in him, answered him and said, You hypocrites. Does each of you on the Sabbath not untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham as she is. Whom Satan has bound for 18 long years. Should she not have been released from this restraint on the Sabbath day? What is the reason that woman for 18 years could not get free of that demon? She was gathering in a synagogue of hypocrites. A hypocrite is an actor who shows you one face. But in their heart, there's someone else. And if you stay around hypocrites long enough, some situation will occur that will show you who they really are. 
Here's what hypocrites do. Hypocrites give an illusion of compassion, attempting to hide their deception. For 18 years, they pretended they cared about the woman. But on the day of her liberation, they would not join the celebration. They told her she should come back another day. It was an illusion of compassion to hide their deception. Her healing did not matter to them. After 18 years with the demon, they wanted her to wait another day to be healed. I don't know about you, but when a demon is in your life, you can't wait another day. That's right. You need liberation right now. Yes. Yes. She suffered long enough. They did not care nothing about her. Hypocrites give an illusion of compassion, attempting to hide their deception. Hypocrites would rather hold up their tradition than show compassion. Jesus said that they would work on the Sabbath to set their animal free from water but condemn work on the Sabbath to set this woman free from Satan. Hypocrites. Mm. Hypocrites sit under instruction from the word of God, but don't experience any transformation in their heart. For 18 years, they have been given instruction from the word of God. And on the day that God moves, there is no celebration of what God had done. You would have thought they were listening to Jesus teach and preach. And because they were that they were believing in Jesus, that their lives were bringing transformation. That they were growing to love God, growing to love God's people, growing in compassion. They were sitting under instruction. Jesus was the teacher. They were pretending they were mature, but could not see when it was time to move from instruction to show compassion. No transformation. Sitting under instruction. You would have thought they wanted God to be glorified. But as soon as the woman started giving God glory, they got angry. And tried to turn the people against the woman and against Jesus to stop praises from going up. You would have thought they wanted the people to grow in faith and trust in God by witnessing God move in the lives of people. But as soon as God moved, they condemned what God had done in that woman's life. Hypocrites. No transformation. Hypocrites, lastly, will criticize and condemn acts of compassion that result in liberation and celebration. God's people are in trouble when they get angry because a demon is commanded to leave. When God's people get used to having a demon among them, they're in trouble. For 18 years, that that demon came to the synagogue week after week. The demon was a member of that synagogue. And when Jesus put the demon out of the fellowship, the people became angry with Jesus. They were angry Jesus was there and that the demon was commanded to leave. They condemned an act of compassion that resulted in liberation and a celebration. Angry that the demon was put out of the fellowship and tried to turn the people against the woman and Jesus. Mm. Hypocrites. It's obvious from the text. When we do ministry like Jesus, God will be glorified. Yeah. And hypocrites will be identified. Yeah. All right. They'll be the ones who will be angry when people break out in a celebration of liberation. When the praises go up, they'll be the ones with the scowl on their face. When we stop the instruction to show compassion, they'll be the one who's angry. They'll be the ones who won't want God to get the glory, won't God, God, want God to get the praise. Who could ever experience liberation in a congregation of hypocrites? No one can. And until someone does ministry like Jesus, then there will never be a liberation and celebration among the places where the people of God gather. Someone must do ministry like Jesus if there will ever be liberation and celebration 
among the people Amen. of God. Amen. If you don't want Amen. God to get glory, if it bothers you when people take praise breaks, if it troubles you that somebody stands up in front of you while you're trying to watch the service because they can't hold their peace, they want to shout, they want to dance, they want to give God glory. If it troubles you that we take bold steps to show compassion, getting rid of traditions that hinder praise, yeah. then just maybe you might be one of those actors among us. Here's the good news. Keep coming to the place of gathering of the people of God like that woman. And the same God that changed that woman can change you. Say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because I played church for a long time. I don't know about you. I used to go to church high. I was a hypocrite in those days. But he got a hold of me one day. Yeah. Yeah. And that word that I've been receiving, that instruction that had not brought any transformation, got a hold of me. And the Lord changed my life. Won't he do it? I used to be the guy singing the songs in church and get out of church and smoke a blunt. But God. Won't he change you? Yes, he will. Won't he start you over again? Yes. Won't he make you new from the inside out? Yes. Won't he change your walk, change your talk, change your life? Won't he do it? Yes. How many of you can remember how you used to be? Amen. And you can look back over your life and say, thank God I am what I used to be. Look where the Lord done brought me from. So why am I telling you that? Keep bringing the hypocrites to church if you know him. Yeah. Bring him to church. All that stuff about hypocrites, tell somebody he wasn't talking about you. He was talking about hypocrites. Yeah. Right, I wasn't talking about nobody here. I was talking about hypocrites. We're those who want to do God's work, right? We want to do ministry like Jesus. Because we want God glorified. And we want hypocrites identified so they can get help. Can I get a witness, somebody? Won't you stand on your feet? That woman was going to that synagogue 18 years with a demon with no change in her life. And with bold compassion, Jesus set her free. I don't know today If there are any among us who have been enslaved by something and need to be set free. But when we pray, we're going to ask God to set people free. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift a hand to heaven if you could. Yes. Say this with me. Be free. Be free. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name Say this with me, everyone, everyone under the sound of my voice, voice. enslaved to, to anything, I command you in the name of Jesus, be free, be, free. be, delivered. be delivered, be set free, set free. Right, now. right now, in the name, in of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Father, I intercede. 
on every soul under the sound of my voice. Some are enslaved to anger, some to bitterness, some to jealousy, some to unforgiveness, some to hate. Some might even be gathered among us who is possessed by a demon. And that demon has their countenance falling, have them bent over and unable to stand up straight at all. They can't live right, can't talk right, can't do right. They received instruction from the word of God. But no transformation. I ask in the name of Jesus that you free that one right now in the name of Jesus. That you set them free. I pray, God, when we go back into this building, let it even start right now. Mm -hmm. That our minds would be made up to do ministry like Jesus. We know if we do that, God will be glorified. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites will be identified. Mm -hmm. And while I didn't get to it, it's in the text, multitudes will be satisfied. Because they will see the power of God in the lives of the people of God. Praises will go up. Blessings will come down. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for what we've heard today, what we've experienced today. Thank you for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for Jesus showing up in that woman's life. Showing us in that text that it's God's will that people not be held captive to anything that we be set free. If it was your desire, God, that we'd be in bondage, Jesus would have left that demon in her life. Mm -hmm. That deliberation experience proves to us that we who are followers of Jesus must desire to see people of God set free. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. And so, God, thank you for today. Thank you for the people of God. Bless each one one by one. If we know anyone today, Lord, who's held captive by anything, give us bold compassion to help that person get set free in the name of Jesus. We love you, we thank you, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. I believe I'm among all believers, but because I don't want to take anything for granted, If anyone has never accepted Christ as his or her Savior, I don't want to take anything for granted. You just lift your hand to heaven. Anyone never accepted Christ? Anyone never accepted Christ? Father, thank you for the believers. Thank you for these who have accepted you as Savior. Who have accepted your death on Calvary for their sins. I pray, dear God, that any who are watching on Facebook or Zoom, if they've not accepted Jesus, that today would be the day of salvation. In the name of Jesus, let the church say amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. All right, precious believers, thank you so much for listening to the word of God. Amen. We wanted to, I wanted to give instruction, but instruction that brings about transformation. Amen. We don't hear the word of God to stay the same. We hear the word of God so we can make changes. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Let's see where we are in our program. At this time, it is time to do what churches have been doing since churches got started. It is time for the collection. Praise the Lord. Chairman Hines is going to come and give us our offertory prayer and give us some direction. Well, song first? No, no. Afterward? Accompanied by Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. How blessed we have been today to be able to come out here, yes. to preach, praise, and hear the word of God. Amen? Yes, amen. 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 So you know what time it is. It's giving time. Yes. Amen? amen? And all of us can say without a doubt that the Lord has blessed us. The fact that we're here today. But over the last year, we have had an opportunity to continue to support the ministry 
of Fort Washington Baptist Church, and you have been diligent, you have been faithful, you have been loyal, and we thank you. Even as we witness the restoration of the church and all of the things that have been done over the last year, you have continued to give, and we thank you for that. Now today, of course, we have several different ways that we can give. We can give through Givelify. You can download that app on your phone, or you can give to FortWashingtonBaptistChurch.org online, or you can continue to do it through the mail to Fort Washington Baptist Church, 11516 Fort Washington Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, zip code 20744. I know you all know our address, but I think I'll give it to you anyway. And for those who are virtual, of course, we thank you for your diligence, for your, uh, for your loyalty, for your commitment. And so without further ado, now we're going to have uh, Trustee Stewart, once I give the prayer, to walk around for those who have not already given through the mail, through the online, through Give the Five. And he'll walk around. If you have any gifts to uh, give today, uh, he will be able to collect it at that time. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Now, could we all stand for the offertory prayer? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for just allowing us to just to rise up out of our beds and out of our homes and to get in our cars or if we're at home, to turn our computers on or our cell phones, to listen to the word of God, to listen to the praise, to listen to all those things that, that lift our hearts. Because God, you have been grateful. You have been grateful to us. You have been merciful. And we thank you for that. Lord, thank you for all of the provision you've given us and that you have allowed us to be able to have a portion of that that we can give back to you to support the ministries of this great church. Lord, we thank you again for all that you do, all that you've done, what you're doing now, and what you'll continue to do through us in the future. Again, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, Trustee Stewart, if, you, if you're out there, you can move around now and do what uh, you're called to do. And uh, we're going to have, uh, once we finish the collection, Deacon Hammond is going to come up and he's going to provide a uh, selection. Excuse me? Now, during the offering, Deacon. Okay, during the offering. All right, during the offering. All right, amen. Amen. You may, you may be seated. Good morning again. Thank you, Chairman. This song, I think, exemplifies that agave love which must exist among Christians. Uh, the song is my rendition of I Need You to Su Survive by Hezekiah Walker. Mm -hmm. I won't harm you with words. 
me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Sing it with me, saints. I pray for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will. giving and how he's blessed us, then we will have uh, Sister Deborah Thomas to come up and read announcements. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you once again for just allowing us to be here today to witness this mm -hmm. great day, Lord. The sun is shining. It's warm. Yes. We've had preaching, praise, and, and Lord, you've just blessed us, and you've blessed us to be able to give, and we thank you for that, Lord, and we pray that we'll use these resources to continue to uplift this church and this community and to do all those things that you would have us do. Yes. Ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Sister Thomas. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. And our announcements are as follows. <laughs> Uh, today's uh, building disciples class for men, women, and young adults has been canceled for today. That's normally at 10:15. Uh, we will be having children's church via Zoom. Uh, the age group is from 2 to 11 years old. Uh, that will be at 11:25 this morning. Uh, we have uh, equipping Bible, equipping disciples Bible study online every Wednesday at 12 noon. That'll be via Zoom. Also. Have, uh, the women's ministry at the port will have a virtual weekends conference. Uh, the dates for that will be Friday, August 13th. The time is 7 to 8.30 p.m. as well as Saturday, August 14th, 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Uh, the deadline to register is on Friday, 23rd, uh, 23rd of July. The cost for the conference is $20. If you'd like to attend, uh, you can make your payment out to Fort Washington Baptist Church if you're paying by check. The memo line should say 2021 Virtual Women's Weekend. If you have your fee today, you can uh, give them to uh, Sister Brenda Patterson as well as Deacon Clinton Harris if you have your fee today. Uh, also, before you leave today, please pick up your 2020 annual report from Trustee Eadlin. Uh, but before you get it, uh, Pastor's going to pray over that. And uh, that concludes our announcements for today. Thank you. Okay, has anyone picked up a set of uh, car keys um, to a Chevy? Brother Park is, has not found his keys. So if anybody's found that, please. Um, Brother Parker, where'd you park it? Yeah. You check the path you walk. All of, um, so it's, it's, you parked up on the top parking lot? Brethren, you guys are all, all up there on the top. Let's look around, see if you see any keys up there. Okay, Saints. This is the uh, 2020 annual report that. Trustee Edelin, Sister Medley, 
my bride and Phyllis Bellamy uh, put together for uh, you all to see all that we did last year. This is the largest annual report we've ever produced. Amen. And it was produced yes. during the pandemic. Amen. And when you look at it, you will be amazed at all the things that we did while not gathering together at the fort. Amen. So let's just say a word of prayer over this. Father, thank you for this great work done for your glory that shows how you moved among us while we were separated even from one another. Even without being in the building, it did not stop ministry from taking place. And so we thank you for these precious saints who served, who kept ministry alive at the fort, and who, write, who wrote reports capturing the essence of their activities. Thank you for those hands that compiled it and put it together and edited it. Thank you for these precious pictures that bring back so many wonderful memories. We love you and praise you, Lord, for these saints and all that you're doing with us and among us and through us. Continue to help us to do ministry like Jesus. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so this is one of those annual reports, saints, that you can put on your coffee t table um, and, and let guests who come to your home see it. Uh, and they'll just be amazed at all that was done at Fort Washington. Once the service is over, you'll be able to go over here to the overhang and get your annual report um, from Trustee Edelin and those who are over there serving with her. Okay? Amen. And anything else we have for today? No. I want to thank our um, team that put the service together. Let's give God some praise for them. And I thank God for each one of you. Amen. Won't you stand while we have a benediction? And saints, it's only 1015. Look at that. You're not done. Won't he do it? Yes, he can. Won't he do it? But when we go back in the building, let's expect to go to at least 11 o'clock. <laughs> you found the parker? Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for our service today. Continue to be with the people of God. Be with Deacon Daniels. We don't see him, but we see his bride. Continue to be with those saints who wanted to be with us today, but could not. Thank you for those who gathered today, Lord. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's give God some praise for Deacon Hutchinson who handled all that A.B. stuff. Amen. Mother Daniel, you're going to get an annual? Let me give you one. You coming to get one? Okay, now when do we go off? What you say? You can, you can, um, you can stop it. You can stop it? Yeah. Oh!